few months ago, William Schneider Jr. arrived at the Caps Media Center with an absolute treasure trove of Ventura history. Bill's father, William Schneider Sr., was a highly respected teacher throughout Ventura. For years, his hobby was recording on camera interviews and family histories with fascinating people all over the county. Recently, his son, Bill Jr., gathered together more than 100 tapes from his father's archives and working here at the Caps Media Center has painstakingly restored these treasures. Bill's new series, called My Father's Stories, explores some of the very early days of Ventura County. Most of the videos were recorded 20 to 30 years ago. The people, places, and stories Bill shares are part of Ventura's rich history. Welcome to My Father's Stories. Well, in your magic binder of stories, who's next? Uh, this is another uh, pioneering family of Sadekoy, uh, Leo Venoni and the Leo Venoni Ranch. Uh, Leo's father took over um, the ranch just, just south of the Sadekoy Golf Course in 1918. It was a ranch pretty much nobody wanted uh, because it wasn't really flat and it wasn't cleared. And it had just little, little terrains and little berms and stuff, so you, you, couldn't, you couldn't plant uh, beans or corn or because you try to irrigate it, it would just run into the gully. Um, something special about this ranch, it was a it was self-supporting ranch. A lot of these ranches around Sadequa at the time, uh, they had other income. They were a doctor or a lawyer or had other income coming in, and it was just like a gentleman's ranch. The Venonia Ranch was a true working ranch. They'd sell the pigs, they'd sell the eggs, and they, they'd sell the cows, and they'd sell the milk. Um, and Leo had to milk the cows every day, before school and after school. And Leo's dad would always tell him, well, you could do anything you want, but just make sure those cows are milked before and after. <laughs> And uh, Leo was a really good athlete in high school. He always wanted to go to uh, high school events, but he couldn't because he always had to uh, melt the cows. But he, was, uh, he finally did make it to Aventura High School and went to high school there. And he was a great athlete in baseball. Um, the ranch has seen some disasters. Uh, in 1928, the, as you know, the St. Francis Dam collapsed and flooded the lower 40 of the Venoni Ranch. It, didn't, it took out a few trees, but not a lot. And, but the subsequent damage was what they call white, white root rot. And it would rot the roots of these lemon trees. And also this white root rot was contagious. It would go to other trees. So he had to pull out about 20 acres of his lemons. So it, it wasn't all just you know, milk and honey in those days. So I'd like to present to you Leo Venoni. Great, let's see it. We are at one of the most historical sites in uh, my favorite community of Satakoy, down near the east end of Telephone Road. We're at Rancho Atilio, and I have with me some of the grandchildren of the original owner here. I'd like to introduce them to, and forgive me if I forget a name, because we've got four of them here, but the first is Leo over here in the green hat. Take your hat off, Leo. Thank you very much. <laughs> but you'll notice all the gray hair. <laughs> and next to me is Aldo, Aldo Venoni. And over here is Evis. And then we have Irene. Now we're missing one and we hope to catch him because he moves pretty fast. But we hope to catch him a little later. Now we're gonna break and kind of talk to each one of these individually because I've found that if we bring up a subject, they all want to talk at once. So we'll be right back. Our first subject is Leo, and Leo is the oldest of the present family, right? Right. Your sister Melba passed away a few years ago, and she was the the elder. What? Eleven months older than I. Leo, I, is there any real reason that Grandpa, your grandfather, settled here in Ventura County? Well, yes, he left Italy uh, unhappy. I guess from what I heard, he was in the service, and when he got out, why, the family had divided all the estate and everything left him out. Oh, oh I wow. don't know. Oh. Huh. So one day he he came in and he says to the family that they were gathered, and he says, uh, 
I want to say goodbye to everybody. I'm going to America, and that was it. That was it. That was it. Now, do you know if he had any uh, object that he was, you know, had somebody told him about this great country of Ventura County? Uh, of course, the, there's always relatives. That, there were some relatives here. Ah. And, of course, the uh, people that came like that, they always uh, uh, had friends or relatives in the areas, and that's how they congregated. They enticed them to come. They kind of stuck together. Right. Blood, uh, blood families stay close yeah. together. And a lot like yours, Leo. A lot like your present day. Uh, Leo, uh, when did uh, your dad come to Satakoy? Now, that's a big event, too. He, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he came in 16. 1916. Right. Okay. And he came from up above the Mesa School. Yeah. To the Kimball Ranch. Okay, do you work for Gene Kimball or? No, he leased the Kimball Ranch. I see. Okay. And then in uh, in 18, he bought this ranch here. Can do you remember him saying anything about this ranch when he first got it? No. So no, I. I, I uh, <laughs> I was pretty small. I know, but... But I can't remember being on the Kimball Ranch. Yeah, okay. That's up on Kimball Road Tilton. Right. Now, did he... What did he plant here? Did he plant any of the orchard that I remember here? Well, I think there were walnuts here. Okay. And uh, they were small trees. And uh, part of the land down below here, why was still primitive. They had old horse nettles and tulies and willows. A lot like it is right, right. That today. Uh. And he, he started planting and he had, I'll never forget, he had uh, cauliflower. At one time he loaded up a 1919 Dodge pickup with high sideboards clear to the top and pulled a two-wheel trailer the same with a solid rubber wheel tires. And uh, we went down to the market, L.A. market, and he ended up giving them away and he hauled <laughs> half of them back. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that L.A. market was a killer. Uh, Leo, you have this beautiful green hat that we've made you take off. Do you sleep with this hat on? Well, not really. It's pretty uncomfortable. It says Uncle Leo. What, where did you get this name? Well, uh, this name came through the involvement in 4-H. Ah. And uh, I and my wife, Rita, we always went to camp with the kids, stayed a week. And some of the little kids that would come in, they were pretty young, and mom and daddy would leave while they would cry. So I gathered them and uh, told them things were okay. And I said, if you ever need something, come to Uncle Leo. Uncle Leo. And that name has stuck. It's been down at the fairgrounds for about 50 years, hasn't it? That's right, 50 years this year. This year, yep. Uncle Leo's barn. So if you want them, I don't know, you're not there every day anymore, are you? Pretty much. Pretty much? Oh, yes. We have our, they the, let us take our RV in. We sleep in there. Yeah. The whole stage of the fair. And uh, if I'm not in the barn, I'm goofing off someplace. Yeah, up there eating burritos or something. <laughs> okay, we're going to let you go. All right. Because we, I see there are four more anxiously waiting to get into, the, into this show. Okay. Bro. Okay, Leo. You bet. Leo Vadoni, Uncle Leo. Okay, we have Aldo with us now. Now, Aldo didn't spend an awful lot of time around Sadako. You went to school here. You uh, graduated from Ventura High School. Yeah, Sadako Grammar School, Ventura Junior High, and then uh, Ventura JC. Yeah. Ventura JC. Now, after you got out of JC, which was, you want to, you want to admit to the year or anything? Was well, it? it's hard to remember all those things. 1940? But, uh, but uh, it was around there, 40, 41. What did you do then, Aldo? I went up to uh, Boeing School of Aeronautics, which is located up in uh, Oakland, and took a one year's course up there. This was not, you, farming was not in your blood then, is that right? No, I didn't care for farming at all. I, you remember any of the chores you had to do? Sure, I uh, had to milk a couple of cows every evening and uh, feed the pigs and all that stuff. That turned me off, too. I'd go I to Oakland. <laughs> I didn't care for that, so I went on 
to other things. Now, when you after you left the school in Oakland, you came back to L.A. and you went to work. Yeah, I as soon as I got out of school, uh, aeronautics school, I got a job at uh, uh, Lockheed Aircraft. Lockheed Aircraft. This is we're getting ready for a big fight. So I uh, so I went down there and. Uh, I worked for them for, I don't remember how many years, but probably around 10 years or so. Now, were you on the big the big plane the first time they flew that down there? Yeah, the that's the Constellation. Constellation. I had that line, and uh, I flew on that on several of the first flights, the test flights it made. And not as pilot, but yeah. uh, as a mechanic. Yeah. Now, after you left Lockheed, you were there how many years? I was there for uh, eight or ten years. Ten years? Like and then what did you do all day? Then I decided to go on my own, so I went over to East Los Angeles. There was a little little uh, dirt strip there. At airstrip. Yeah, airstrip was okay. called East Los Angeles Airport. And uh, I took over one end of that field and Built a, a big steel hangar and, and uh, started an aircraft repair shop. Ah. And I repaired everything from uh, DCC to uh, Patrick whatever. You did it all. How yeah. long were you there? Oh, I uh, I guess I operated that probably about 11 years. And uh, then they. they uh, they sold the field, and I, I sold my hangar to a concern over in uh, uh, Santa Monica Airport. And they took the hangar down and, and took it over there. Took it over there? Yeah. yeah. And you came back to Satakoy with your wife, Ruth. And do you have children, although I forgot to ask? Uh, yeah, I have I have five children, but I didn't come back to Satakoy. I, I moved to... Uh, to North Hollywood, and I lived there for a long time. Then I built a uh, I built a home in Northridge. Well, one of these homes over there was built by my uncle McAdam. Remember? Yeah, McAdam. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was the that was the big house in uh, Northridge. Yeah, Bob McAdam. Yeah. Yeah. You came back to Satakoy, though. You can't you can't stay away. No. You got to come back here. Now, when I retired, well, I came on back and built a house uh, up on uh, Telegraph and Telephone Road in Kimball. Yeah. And uh, that's where I am now. Okay. Aldo, it's good to see you. You're looking well. Oh, thank you. You're feeling pretty good? Oh, I feel tired. <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> like everybody else. Yeah. It's time for lunch anyway. Isn't yeah. It? You tell Ruth hello for me. All right, I sure will. Okay, we've been visiting with Aldo Vanoni. One of them, and we've got three more to go. Take care, Aldo. Okay. Well, now we have Evis Vanoni with us. And Evis, we pretty much went to school together, didn't we, through Yeah, we, we started uh, first grade here in Satikoy and went uh, on in uh, to four years of high school. And, and uh, then I went my separate way, and you went on to junior college. And you went to Davis, I think, no, didn't I you? I went, went to uh, Cal at Berkeley. Berkeley. And I spent four years there, and then... Uh, what did you work on? What was your subject matter uh, there? I uh, took a, a major in soil science. Uh-huh. Uh, you've got just about every kind of soil on this piece, too, haven't you? Yes, there's uh, everything from river bottom to heavy doby. Heavy doby. That's what happened to the walnut trees, wasn't it? Yeah. They had a clay top there. Evis, you, you've kind of been the honcho here in, in agriculture, haven't you, on this on this property? Yes, I, I left uh, the ranch and thought I was going to pursue a, an easy job, but uh, I always had a yearning for the ranch and uh, so finally I just gave up and came back and uh, I spent uh, well since 44 I came back I stayed in 
work here on the ranch. You know, as just sort of a secret between all of us, Evis can't leave this ranch. He is here every morning, right, Evis? Yes, I still come. come. Well, that, that's great. That's great. That shows where your roots are. Um, did you plant any of this, Evis? We have three uh, orchards here that I remember. Yes, um, uh, I have been involved in planting everything except the uh, walnuts, which were on the ranch were when uh, Dad purchased the property. Now, this house that I see over here that's just gotten a new paint job, was that your first home? Yes, I, I was uh, born there and uh, lived there until uh, my early teens when we moved to the other house here. And, and, and now you're, you live up on just about tele, Telegraph Road. I'll get it. Yes, yeah. uh, yes. I, uh, I bought a ranch when I came back. Uh, the old Gill Brothers Ranch on Telegraph yeah. Road. And uh, when my son let me know that he had no interest in farming, why I thought I'd dispose of that. And, uh, and I spent my full time here on the family property. Now you told him about all the hard work, didn't you? All the chores that you had to do when you were a kid, milking cows and feeding chickens and everything. That's what scares him away. Well, he, he got first-hand information because I tried to get all the help I could out of him as he grew up. <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. Evis, what do you remember most about living here? Well, it was just uh, a good, full cool life. We were always busy and, and uh, we had a close family. And it's a good life compared to what I see the youngsters growing up now. And I remember your father. He helped a lot. He was a, in the Scout, Boy Scout troop that we had here at Sapway. And we have pictures of all three of you guys in the Boy Scout troop. And we went on trips and it was just a wonderful experience. We're always so grateful to him. And I think you learned something from that too, not just scouting. Yes, and, and I think of um, all the parents, your father and, and Nidiver and uh, Russell Ree, everybody pitched in and, and took part. And in turn, and in turn, you and Virginia, your wife, tell her low for me, worked very hard with 4-H as Leo and Rita did. Yes, uh, I um, had uh, some dealings with 4-H before I came back to the ranch and after we came back why and as my children got to be a club age why we started the Sadikoi 4-H and continued as long as my children were involved. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have two more to go, Evis. Right. Good to see you again. Right. Okay, man. Take care. Okay, we now have Joe in the corner in the hot seat. It's called the hot seat, Joe. Yeah, great. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Are you in agriculture by any chance, Joe? Uh, yes. What do you do? Well, I, I'm an engineer. Oh, really? I work with uh, primarily soil and water items, ir yeah. irrigation and yeah. such. We have a lot of people coming in here investing in ranches, and they don't know anything about it, do they? Well, I suppose that's true. And they need boys like you to do it. How long have you been around this town? It is. All your life? Yeah. No. Uh, I left here in about 62 when I went to college. Probably 60. Yeah. Got out of college in like in 63, and then I actually went to uh, Corcoran, California, which is the Central Valley. Yeah. Worked there for a farming company for 24 years. And from there, they had sent me to uh, Australia. Morocco. Oh, you've been around. Saudi Arabia. Uh, and then uh, got a retirement, early retirement from them, and uh, went into work as, just as a consultant. Yeah. And have been since. Have but, you, but I've only been back here for a year or so now. Yeah. Any, have you seen any place as nice as Sadiqar? 
Not really. <laughs> no, there's a, a lot of nice places and you can learn to enjoy it. Probably any place you go if you have uh, every your family and everything's going fine. But uh, there's no climate like uh, this climate around here. But were you here when they uncovered, he was just out here, I guess, uh, getting ready to plant lemons and they had to move a little dirt. And then were you here when they discovered all those Indian bowls? Yeah, yeah I was here, uh, not actually living here at the time. I was away uh, in the service. Ah. Uh, but, you know, I was kind of kept up on it by all the photos and uh, whatever. Now, who else in the family was in the service, by the way? Uh, I think Albert. Albert was? He was in during the Second World War, and I pulled a little bit of time during the Korean War. Yeah. Yeah, Albert, and they left Evis and Leo home to run, their, run the ranch, I guess. That's right. Um, what do you remember most about this locale? People have, do you remember any of the dynamic things that happened, like floods or anything like that? Well, I do recall the, the bridge washing out. The first time that the old side of Quake Bridge was washed out and we walked, uh, we're, they drove us down there and we could watch the, there was a gas main strapped along the side of the bridge and it, it came off and fell in the water and big spouts of water bubbling up and uh, remember that was quite well. That was what, about 19... 37. 37, I believe, yeah. about right. And then uh, I suppose another item I remember quite well during the Second World War. I observed uh, one of those rice balloon bombs yeah. burn and, and uh, explode in the river bottom just near the old uh, Sadiqoy Rock Company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, good to see you. Thank you, Bill. And good luck. Good luck. We have as our next guest Irene. Bononi Rear, all the way from Santa Paula, where I think Joe lives too. Who lives right across the street? Yeah, yeah. you guys. I keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on him. <laughs> well, you should. He's kind of lame, isn't he? I feel uh, since I've retired now and still in nursing, I can keep up some of my skills. Uh, yeah. Between he and his daughter. How many years did you work as an RN? Well, I. Uh, I worked for several years and then retired. Then uh, I quit for about 20 while I was raising my family and went back for 17 more. So I figured I had the best of both worlds. Yes, you did. What do you remember about Satikoy and living on Rancho Until? You know, I got good memories of Satikoy and the Rancho. I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of chores. At the time, I may not have thought it was fun, but I learned a lot. Yeah. And um, I enjoyed the outdoor chores the most, the milking the cows, the feeding the pigs. You, you had to milk cows too? Oh, yeah. Really? I did. Attilio was a taskmaster, wasn't he? Yeah, he was a good one. Yeah. Tell uh, me what you remember about Melba. Melba, Melba was a treasure. That's the best way to put it. And she was almost more like a mother to me than a sister, since she was the oldest and I was next to the youngest. Yeah. But uh, she was truly uh, a blessed person to have around. <coughs> I could talk to her. Um, she uh, planned my whole wedding for me. Wow. She did, you know, yeah. it's like I had two mothers, but I could really communicate with Melba. That's right. And she ran this office of you, too. Sure did. Yep. She was uh, always there. And, She'd leave anything to help you. She taught me how to keep my books and taught me how to work with money. Uh, a good teacher. Yes. What do you remember about Albert? Albert? Well, I have some fond memories of Albert. I lived in Santa Paula and I'd come down here every Friday to wash my mother's hair and set it yeah. you know, and comb it. And if I had a problem with my car, I just came down here and said, Albert, I've got a problem here. And he'd take it down to the shop, and when I was ready to go home, it was all fixed. It was ready. It was all fixed. He was the head mechanic. Well, he was the only mechanic, too, yeah, wasn't he? he was. And this, this operation here it had a lot of equipment. Yes, it did. I, I uh, learned to drive on a tractor. In fact, those old tractors with the levers and the brakes. Yes. 
and then uh, the real tractors and and trucks, so I, I was very ready to get my driver's license by the time I was old enough. You could drive anything, an old Caterpillar and a, a John Deere, yeah. Of course, I really enjoyed all that outdoor stuff. Can't beat it. No. Nope. It's a great, it's a great way to be, to be raised as a farm kid, I think, especially in this town. Very rich heritage. Yeah. And I think the best thing was the sense of family and belonging. Uh, there's not one person in the family that wouldn't drop everything to help you if you needed it. That's so important. How many actual blood relatives are there? Well, are see, we're all blood related because... Well, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, Tim. He's, oh. you know, not, not husbands, but uh, kids, your kids. They all have the Venoni line. Have you reached 100 yet? I don't think so. There were 33 nieces and nephews, I think, at the time Nava passed away. Yeah. But they're having kids now. Sure, they're having them now. So, um, there's, there's quite a few. Big family. Big family. And Attilio thought a lot of his church. Yes, he did. And I tell my children now, who pretty much all still attend and practice regularly, that they can thank their grandmother and grandfather. Yeah. For that because uh, they instilled it in all of us, and I think at first maybe my granddad, my dad wasn't maybe gung ho on going, but mom made sure made him go, and he did. Yeah, and he was confirmed with me. Yeah, and uh, we went all the time and stuff like that. What was your? I can you know I can remember New Year's Eve parties in the basement here. Yeah. In this house. Wow. They, that, they were fun. They were a lot of fun. I yeah. had a lot of them before I was old enough to attend. Yes, I don't think you were there. I heard all the stories. Oh, and yeah. uh, I did get to attend one or two the, towards the end. But um, yes, they were. You know, that, that basement served for a lot of yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Grand old house. Grand old house. Mom cooked at Christmas dinner every year. Really? Until she was up in years. And yeah. We went from one table to two to three to four to accommodate everybody. Now you need a hotel, don't you? But it was fun. And they're good memories. Good memories. All right, we're going to, uh, well, oh, one more thing. One more thing. Were you in any of the organizations that we talked about earlier, like Girl Scouts or uh, 4-H or anything like that? I was in Girl Scouts. You, you miss Sadikoy? I can't, it's hard well, to believe, not, Irene. Not entirely, you know, when okay. I was in the second grade, it was during the war years, and there wasn't gas to drive. That's right, no gas. So I did go to Sadikoy Grammar School in the second grade, and it was a memorable year. Yeah. This is Johnson, do you remember him? Certainly. A wonderful teacher. And then I remember that mud fight on the way home where <laughs> <laughs> everybody was slinging mud and grass and yeah. got called into the principal's office the next day. That does happen. <laughs> uh, so I, I do have a few memories of that. Yeah, that was Mr. Rice, wasn't it? That was Mr. Rice. Mr. Rice, yeah. 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 Tell me about your family. Well, I married Tim uh, right out of nurse's training. I came home and he was a in the Navy out at Port Wainami, and um, we have five children, four of them are married, we have uh, eight grandchildren. Wow. And uh, we try to get together from time to time. Good. Three, three of the girls now live in Washington State, in the uh, Spokane area, and uh, one in Goleta is presently moving to that area. Really? Well, they can have a lot more up there. So good to see you. Thanks for coming.